my fellow citizens, our Earth is in the middle of a crisis, plunging deeper into chaos. No, I feel your pain and your loss. We can't stand idly by and let this happen. We must rise up and... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Damn it. Well, this is awkward. Hi, my name is Josh Shell, and I am the host of the Let's Start a Cult podcast, where each episode, myself and some guests take a look at different cults from around the world, for educational purposes only, and definitely not to start our own cult. Join me every other week as we break down dangerous religious cults, political extremist groups, and every other kind of cult in between. Should I apologize for the terrible southern accent? No? Okay. Subscribe and listen to Let's Start a Cult anywhere you listen to podcasts. Hi guys, welcome to episode 25 of Unethical Podcast. There's bad parts to this whole thing. We're welcoming back Bobby Allen and Tyler Fortin as our guest hosts for this episode. And today we're going to be discussing the missing persons case of Susan Powell. Welcome to Unethical Podcast. let's talk a little bit about Susan and Joshua Powell. Okay. So uh, this case is technically unsolved and we don't normally cover that, but we're all grownups here. This is not a thrilling murder mystery. This is a missing persons case. Missing person case of Susan Powell. (sighs) Susan and, uh, and Joshua Powell met in Tacoma, Oregon in 2000. They were both attending the LDS Church Institute of Religion at the time. Joshua had a bachelor's degree in business and Susan was a cosmetologist. So Joshua, we'll talk about him a little bit. He had a bit of a rocky upbringing. His parents divorced after his father lost interest in the LDS church. And he just wasn't a very good father. He would get the boys, his three sons, to sit and watch porn with him like a lot and he was generally just like very lazy about parenting he just let them do whatever the fuck they wanted all the time and then sent them home to their uber religious mom who was obviously stringent and religious yeah do you think like okay i know for a fact that this used to be a somewhat normal thing back then as guys would call each other not in the totally 2000s but like before that like in the 70s where like they would have stag parties or whatever and they'd watch porn together which i find yeah but i mean uh maybe he's just like taking that theory of like the 70s thinking kids are okay to be their buddies and then like being so repressed from being in the lds for so long that that's like I don't know, I just feel like it's a perfect storm to watch porn with your kids, right? You think it's okay, it's kind of normal. You saw your friends do it. You were a fucking crazy religious person. Now you want to like get it out of you, pump it out of you. I don't know. I feel like watching porn or being introduced to porn at an early age by your parents comes up a lot in like serial killer backgrounds nah, and stuff. Yeah. <sighs> Bobby, Bobby looks already shocked. Already it's shocked. Just- <laughs> No, I was more shocked that you were trying to justify that for the dad. <laughs> it's, it's not that I'm trying to justify it. I'm no, I get what you're it. saying. Like, like he's like, let's go back to talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, it's totally normal. Please don't put me on a watch list. Okay, Richard. All right. I'm already on watch list. Trust me. Uh, it's not that. It's just like I'm not saying that it's not normal at all. But I mean, if you live a weird, secluded lifestyle your whole life. I don't know. Like, what could you find normal? Like, I find shit normal that people probably don't find normal. You know what I mean? It's not to that extreme. Yeah, Yeah, no, that's fair. To their normal. Yeah, yeah. like, it's gross. Trust me. It's not like, but what what do you know? He lived... Like you said, like maybe he's trying to be like the cool dad. Like that's what I mean, and that's not cool. Watch some porn, like you know, like. Well, it worked. It worked, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it did work. Uh, his sons yeah. were like really, really super close to him their whole lives. Um, 
So when Joshua was in his teen years, uh, he exhibited some very disturbing behavior, including killing his sister's gerbils. I don't think he shoved them up his ass, but I can't say. <laughs> Let me wigs. <laughs> <laughs> and he also threatened to kill his mother with a butcher knife. He also had some issues with depression and tried to commit suicide at least once. What? Yeah, if only he'd been successful. That yeah, exactly. That'll happen for sure. Well, you do have like you're like my dad's cool and everything, and then one day you like realize I watched porn with my dad and try to kill yourself, and then realize it's probably not a good idea to kill myself. Maybe that's. (laughs) These are fair assumptions to make. Maybe. Never watched porn with my folks, so I can't say for sure. That would be weird. Not yet. Anybody who's listening, if you've watched porn with your parents, let us know. Was it weird? I have a story for you. My friend at work was telling me, yeah, I was watching a, I was watching a movie with my mom. We were watching Fifty Shades of Grey. And we're like, what? You were what? watching Fifty Shades of Grey with your mom? And he was like, yeah, we, it got a little weird. So we turned it off halfway through. I'm like, you got halfway through? I've watched that movie. A quarter way through <laughs> is too far. You watched that with your mom? And you're like, this is petty. This, Anyways. <laughs> Yeah, imagine the guy like I'm gonna. I want you to sign this contract because I'm gonna dominate you, Mom. Do you think he'll she'll sign it? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, when Joshua met Susan, he had just recently got out of a relationship. His ex girlfriend Catherine Everett described him as being very controlling once they had started living together. And she chose to end the relationship when she was miles away from him visiting a friend in Utah, which is a pretty good fucking indicator of what kind of guy he was. Yeah. But Susan didn't know that. So Susan and Joshua got married in 2001. After their wedding, they lived with Joshua's father, porno daddy. His name is Stephen Powell. They lived with him for a while. But he was really super fucking creepy about Susan. He reportedly would follow her around with a camcorder. He would spy on her in the bathroom using a mirror around the corner under the door. And he read her personal journals and stole her underwear. But then one day, Stephen actually explicitly propositioned Susan and she was like, fuck no you old perv josh we're moving pack your shit yeah and they did yeah and then from what i understand i could be wrong josh was like well relax like when she told him he's like relax (laughs) like ugh, gross yeah imagine your dad hitting on your girlfriend bobby imagine your dad your dad bobby just going like hey mel want to come over and have a drink with me you want to want to fuck no, I can't because I grew up with a pretty normal family. So. <laughs> I'm saying imagine it. I'm not saying can you imagine it. I'm saying take yourself into that moment and imagine it. Go. I would kick him in the nuts probably. <laughs> <laughs> my first thought. <laughs> Good luck using those. I don't. <laughs> I tricked you into thinking about that, you fuck. <laughs> Okay, so Steven's fixation with Susan was, like, a lot deeper than just him thinking she was hot. Like, she's a young lady living in his house. He's a weird guy, probably hasn't, like, dated a whole lot since the divorce. But he actually created an online persona under which he would write tender love songs and post them. Mm. All about Susan. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah, oh, all wow. sorts of them. Oh, they're they're on the internet somewhere too like at least in the other like i've heard them from I, in that cold podcast they play like clips of it so I, they must be on the internet somewhere so you can go listen to them i'm pretty sure i haven't i haven't fact checked that don't uh, don't quote me on that but i'm pretty sure you can go listen to susan powell songs <laughs> you know what richard if you love cold podcasts so much why don't you marry him <laughs> i never asked she <laughs> never asked <laughs> I would. Polygamy is illegal in Canada. That's why. <laughs> Don't you think I've tried? Yeah, okay, except right. for in where Happy Valley or wherever the hell that place is, and be bountiful. Yeah. Bountiful. <laughs> okay, so uh, the couple relocated just outside Salt Lake City, Utah, and they had two boys, Charles in 2005 and Braden in 2007, and in no small part due to Susan being wanting to be far, 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 so fucking far away 
from Stephen Powell, who was up in Washington. So uh, Susan became disenchanted with Joshua over the years of their marriage. Joshua, like his father before him, abandoned the church. He would also regularly keep in contact with his old man and encourage him to visit, even though Susan was super uncomfortable with him and his advances never stopped. That's gross. Uh, It is gross. It is gross. Could you fucking imagine your father-in-law propositioning you like that? And and her husband still letting him come over, knowing all of this is still going on and still inviting him to the house. Yeah, with her kids in the house. Yeah, that's I think there needs to be like a motion that's passed. If you're like friends with this guy or like you know of this happening, you're legally obligated to beat the tar of said person. Yeah, I like that. For making that situation happen. (laughs) Like like not even like allowed, like you are obligated to. Like if you see someone on the side of the road dying and you want to go give them CPR, that's the same situation. The Good Samaritan law. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> the I was just trying to help her. You know what I mean? Like you, you can't get in trouble for that. You absolutely can. If you administer first can, aid on somebody and then they say they didn't have my consent, you're absolutely going to court. No, nope, not in Canada. Yes, in Canada. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. That's what the Good Samaritan yeah. Act is for. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in Quebec, I know that you are legally obligated if you are first aid trained to help somebody, but I know in Ontario, it's, yeah, it's, you can get it a lot of shit for starting. To what you're saying, uh, Tyler, what you're referring you to is if they're passed out and you they have no way to give Uh-oh. you consent, so you automatically do it yeah. and then they go, I didn't give consent. We're like, well, dude, you were knocked out and I thought you were going to die, so there's no way to come at you yeah. that way. But if they're... Uh, so she's gonna just sit there and watch them choking because <laughs> they don't they give me the signal. I just yeah. stood there and watched them die. The good mm-hmm. Samaritan law also never stands up because all you have to say is I had a reasonable belief that I would be in danger if I stepped in. That's enough. Yeah. That's all you have to say, and it won't stand up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that could be as simple as like I had a reasonable belief, reasonable belief that this passed out homeless person had the hep C, and that's why I didn't stand, that's why I didn't help. Mm-hmm. that's good enough it yeah. doesn't stand up it's more of like uh I, I thought it was to protect the person administering it not to protect the other person probably right but it can be used by either side mm. where am i at here porno steve is still visiting the house ah yes porno steve <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joshua was also outrageously bad with money. He he racked up two hundred thousand dollars in debt by two thousand seven. Six Jesus. years into the marriage, they were forced to declare bankruptcy because of him. Yeah. Oh my god! And he wasted all his money on like electronics and stupid knickknacks oh, and just shit. shit. Yeah, like just junk. That's what I have. Junk. Well, he also <laughs> had a really bad habit of getting pissed and destroying that junk. Yeah. Oh my God. So they have to go and buy more. <laughs> exactly. And then he would spend more money getting more shit. And he did the shit to the house they lived in too. He would just destroy the structure of the house. Was he at least buying cheap shit to destroy so oh, he could buy more of it no. with this 200000 no, Top of the line no, video okay. cameras, computers. What, what kind of stuff? Like just, oh, okay, just like. Okay. There's so much like footage and stuff of this because he did do this, which is cool. Like because he did buy a bunch of junk and he just recorded all sorts of shit. Like he was a big (laughs) nerd that way. He did. He just recorded all sorts of junk, like nothing, absolutely nothing. Like, well, how'd my day go today? But he'd have like audio logs. Like went to the bank today, talked to the banker, drove home. (laughs) Like there's all sorts of stupid shit like that with this guy. Oh my God. I thought I thought when she said knickknacks, it was like oh. when you go over to your grandma's place and she's got all that shit in her china. <laughs> she had how much shit in her vagina? <laughs> I was stuffing it up there, Alaskan pipeline style. Am I, am I the only one who heard that? Last, <laughs> last uh, time I checked, there was about seventy-five silver spoons. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't be cheap either. Uh, did I actually use the term knickknacks? Yeah. Yeah, I used that term last last episode too. Knickknacks. Oh. Oh, I guess that's a thing. Okay, <laughs> I'm I'm person that says knickknacks. Fine. Nice, but I fancy <laughs> myself in autumn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, 
Susan's friends also expressed a lot of concern about Joshua being overtly controlling over Susan and the boys. So in 2008, Susan recorded a video where she detailed all the property damage that Joshua had inflicted, and she read what is essentially an oral will where she listed all of the family's assets and where they were to go in the case that something happened to her. And she said that her marriage was in extreme turmoil. And she said, if I end up dead, do not believe it's an accident. Whoa. And then she wrote a letter that she put into a safety deposit box that he could not access, saying that he had threatened to destroy her if she left him getting pretty spooky around here real spoops real scary and i'm just gonna say it i'm just gonna fucking say it you know what i know a lot of people are thinking of it and i'm thinking of it too why didn't you leave yeah yeah i don't understand i'm not religious i don't know if this is a religion thing because you got to get into the kingdom by being a wife or some shit it was why not leave it yeah. was very religion and she was very still he was he gave up on the lds church but she did not and she brought the kids to church still and she still believed that josh would come back around he would come back into the lds church they would be because they had a couple good years like a couple like they had good times too they didn't just she loved him and she wanted him to be but it was complicated for her because of her religion wouldn't let her out of the contract she made which is i'm going to be with him forever so she was Mm -hmm. pushing through that she was like she had jobs and shit she was paying for everything she she put a lot put up with a lot because of her being in the lds church and i'm not trying to uh, bash the lds church at all with this it's just the wife thing right like the wife for life and i I, yeah well i'm gonna bash it i'm gonna bash it yeah. Your religion should allow for women who genuinely ref- fear for their fucking life to leave. I think she could. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then how do they control women? Yeah. That's their whole thing. <laughs> Listen here, you little shit. Whole thing's based on. <laughs> but she has it ingrained. She's not upset about that. She thinks that's right, which is fucked, right? Like the way you're brought yeah. up, man. You know what? And I get that for her. Yeah. She has my sympathy. I still full on LDS church, get your fucking shit together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But do you think they're going to change their ways right now? Because I said so on a podcast? No, probably <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. <laughs> so they go right up the ladder. Uh, I, I disagree. I strongly disagree. We've made some very good points about people being able to hold things in their <laughs> vagina pouches. They're listening. <laughs> They're, they're worried, actually. I'm going to write a letter to put it in a safety deposit box that the government comes for us. <laughs> <laughs> this is an accident. I'm not funny tonight. I apologize. We've spent quite a, quite a few, uh, well, couple, and I'm actually writing another one now all about LDS Church. Yeah. Well, nice. Just saying, if you, if you show up this much on True Crime Podcasts, you're doing something wrong. That's okay. I don't think we're trashing like each individual no. person, just the whole fucking thing no. in general, right? Like there could be some good ones. There's a oh good, probably some good ones. Lots of good ones. There's good people yeah. in every religion. It's there's yeah. just the extreme. There are. Yeah. I wrote another episode on the Nutty Putty Cave. The gentleman who unfortunately perished in there, he's Mormon dude. I have nothing but nice things to say about him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nutty Putty Cave? Yes, it's called the Nutty Putty Cave. <laughs> <laughs> right, that one got me i don't know <laughs> nutty putty that sounds so that sounds like a pile of come stuff that's you have gum come come no. is what i said oh, oh he sorry. said he come said, okay uh... yeah that's what i was gonna say just just guys go there just jerk one off in the cave and it's like a pile <laughs> <laughs> that's your nutty putty that's the first thing my brain thought of when you said the name it's actually called that because the uh, clay that makes up the structures inside the cave is like silly putty in your hands. Oh. oh. So it's like, come. All right. So it's, yeah. It's like no. it's- <laughs> God, I fucking hope not. <laughs> you should see the sludge that's coming out of mine. Oh, I am uh, way too fucking gay for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I've horrified the gay. My fault. This, this is why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so. On December 6th, 2009, Susan and her boys were seen at church in the morning and her neighbor visited with them until about 5 p.m. On December 7th, the entire Powell family had completely dropped off the map. The children weren't dropped off at daycare in the morning. The boys were four and two at this time. And 
concerned family members and by concerned i mean nosy uh they dropped by to see if they were all okay but they found they found the house was empty but just they weren't getting a response they couldn't say for sure whether the house was empty but so they called the police they're worried for their safety the police broke in right away because they wanted to make sure that they had not succumbed to carbon monoxide poisoning which is apparently a thing that they're allowed to do i didn't know that uh, convenient i guess yeah that seems well, isn't it isn't it called like a wellness check or something like that when the cops come yeah, but I don't think they can break down the door unless they like. No, I don't, know. I don't know. If they have any sort of reasoning, which once again, like you said, if the cop thinks that there could be a carbon monoxide issue. Yeah, but that's like, always the case. Maybe it just doesn't want to fucking talk to you. Go away. Is this fair? <laughs> no, I know. That's why I don't. I don't get it either. Because uh, maybe they had some sort of tip of it, or I, I don't know. Maybe they heard a beeping, like you know. Maybe they didn't change the alarm in their smoke detector, and they heard beeping. They're like, "Oh, maybe that's the CO detector. Get in there." I don't know how they could justify it, just thinking it. Right? There had to be some other thing to let them think that. Yeah, yeah, there, there had to be because yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't. It was like his mom. His mom and aunt, I think, are the ones who came to check on them. And, like, they wouldn't have any authority to say, like, yeah, I give you permission. Like, yeah. I don't I don't know. I don't understand. But they did. They fucking busted the door in. House is empty. But they noticed that there was two large box fans pointing in one specific wet spot on the couch. And they noticed that Susan's purse, wallet, and ID were there, but not her phone. Uh, and obviously she wasn't answering the phone so it's like it's not here apparently it's not with her because she's not answering what the fuck's going on yeah so that's sus sus i did it right sus. that's what the little kids yeah, say good job richard good job sus sus, 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 red, sus, red, sus. Is sus. red is sus what well, okay you went too far i don't get that part of it red, red is, is sus. it's one of the colors of the dudes in among us Oh, so that's an you don't, emo- have, you don't have to get it red is sus <laughs> i asked jack about uh hair brine hero brine Hero yeah. He says it's called hairbrine, but anyway, he Hero I asked Brian, him yeah. about it. Yeah. He told me like what the deal is. Sick. It's a it's a legend. It's nothing. There's never ever been anything. Jack is Jack is six. Oh. <laughs> I thought you had like this like researcher or something. <laughs> he is a researcher. Jack knows more about fucking yeah, he knows okay. more about gaming and stuff than we do. Yeah, probably. probably. That's why I had to ask him about it. Yeah, he's a little genius. He was like, oh yeah, this dude, this dude, man, if you have the mod, you can make him do whatever you want. But if you don't have the mod, he'll destroy your whole village. And I was like, oh, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's a legend of Hero Brian. People claim to have seen it. Uh, what What is this? Can I ask? It's a you? Minecraft thing. It's nerd, oh. nerdy as fuck. Let's talk about, we'll talk about guitars one time. No, no, we'll talk about guitars at some point. I'm sure of it, okay? No. Uh, I promise you, I will. No. Can we go to didgeridoo? Didgeridoo don't. Well, uh, funny enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so much to everyone's relief and surprise, Joshua returned home around 5 p.m. with his two boys in tow. And he was asked to come down to the police station to answer some questions about where he went, why is Susan not here, uh, and he told the police that he had woken the boys just after midnight the night before to take them camping at Simpson Springs. And he described where they camped and what they had done while they were there. And he said that they left Susan sleeping at the house. So who wants to point out all the things wrong with this? <laughs> I mean, it seems very reasonable to me. Uh, um, <laughs> well, uh where do i start waking them up at midnight is the yep. worst is the stupidest thing because they're kids well i understand i understand getting up early to go like fishing or camping or whatever when you want to get on the road like leaving at you know four or five a.m but why would you wake your children up who are two and four at midnight they're two and four they're babies like why would you wake them up at midnight to take them camping like why would you take them camping yeah that was like a nightmare not only that it was like a fucking snowstorm 
it wasn't like a regular night. It was a weird fucking super bad weather night. Why that night? You know, like, yeah, there's bad parts to this whole thing. This is very bad. Like that's li- they're literally this. The, they're the ages of my kids. Like, well, I mean, Lara's not quite two, but I'm picturing waking Gabe and Lara up at midnight and loading them in the car. Come on, guys, we're going camping, and yeah. it's fucking pitch black. Oh, they'd be they'd be a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Have any of you guys had those had those nights where though where you can't sleep? And like maybe he was just like, fuck it. Let's, Let's go. go camping, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I just watch a movie, but yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Next time I'm just gonna be like, get up, guys. What if you didn't have camping. a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> Grab the tent, you little shit. We're going camping. <laughs> Mom, it's one in the morning. I have school. <laughs> Don't forget the cigarettes in Advil, okay? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and my whiskey. <laughs> Yeah, so there's also like uh, you left fans blowing on to a wet spot on your thing to go camping at night. Uh, Spilled the drink before he left, man. Oh, we uh, we we fostered a dog for one day for a friend, and he peed on the couch. That's what happened. But the the, the, do- the dog is back now. We we vacuumed up all the hairs. So yellow sus now because <laughs> of pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for explaining that. That made it better. <laughs> because it's yellow he's yellow right box fans are stupid box fans don't work yeah in in hell where you live but where i live it's they're fine (laughs) yeah they don't work with the thousand degree temperature sure you're just blowing around the heat (laughs) but we get some cold air action under the hot it works fine what's wrong with the box fan yeah fan we have in our bedroom it's like one of those industrial fans when it's on low it's like (laughs) <laughs> the best. sounds like if you ever got on the top of like a walmart and you hear all the ac units running yeah that's pretty much the fan we have in our bedroom mm. on summer <laughs> yeah what other things are wrong with this scene guys there's got to be more yeah i wasn't listening okay so someone mentioned the weather yeah. yep the okay time blizzard then the time obviously it's fucking december yeah even if it wasn't a blizzard it's still fucking december yeah Midnight. Also, box fans. Box fans. The boys are two and four. Yeah. What is a box yeah. fan? It's a fan. It's a big square fan. Oh, it's just like a regular. It's okay. Like, yeah. Like two feet by two feet. Yeah. Okay. That's really the main points. The other thing was that it was Monday. All her shit. Oh, that's the thing. But all her shit pl- minus her phone was still there too. Everything right? was there except her phone. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's messed up. Nobody's leaving to go camping without your shit. You know, like well, she didn't leave. She was left home sleeping. Oh, that's right. Yeah, which is very convenient. Yes. So she didn't go. Yeah. But yes. Yeah, so it's Monday. That's the other big problem. He has to work in like six hours. Yeah. Didn't tell his boss he's not coming in. Yeah. Didn't tell the daycare the kids aren't coming in. Yeah, at least fucked off. Service. Okay, so the police follow up on everything he tells them. The area is covered in fresh snow because of the blizzard, but even so, there is no evidence that anyone had been camping there. So Joshua didn't have any answers to these questions, except for he thought it was actually early Sunday morning and not Monday morning when they went. Ugh, that happens to me all the time. What a silly guy. <laughs> Just the other day, I was telling my coworkers that <laughs> you wouldn't believe. I thought it was Sunday today. I mean, <laughs> sorry, I'm three hours late. I had to go. I had to go camping at yeah. two in the morning. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was unavoidable. You know how mushrooms are. You know, you know how mushrooms get. <laughs> okay, so the other problem with this is that police asked the oldest son, Charlie. He is four. Remember. about the camping trip that he took with daddy and he said that they did go in the middle of the night in the snow but that susan was with them when they left and also that susan wasn't with them when they came back oh dear but he's just you know little tiny charlie boy he's just not remembering the facts 
Yeah. He's been watching too much of that fucking YouTube. Yeah. Been listening to too much unethical podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Highly recommended for your four year old. Please, uh, if you Highly. Have, if you have a four year old, get them uh, to get a. Uh, uh, Apple Spotify podcast account. account. No, Apple podcast. Cause you can go rate and review our show. I don't care if it's in yeah. Babel, baby Babel, just make sure they know what five stars look like. Five stars. One, two, three, oh. four, five. They should know if your four-year-old doesn't know what a star is. Yeah. They're stupid. David, much rather watch this than Ryan, Miss Ryan's mystery play date. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What did the other kid say to the cops? Probably. Cause he was two. Yeah. He wouldn't have said anything. A slacker. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> probably make the siren go wee woo. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunate. Unfortunately, he didn't really have smart parents or a smart dad. So, yeah, that's Fair true. Not. That's true. Oh, yeah. poor little Charlie. So, unethical parents out there, we will introduce a matinee show for your four year olds if you like. Just let us know. <laughs> Gabe can host it. He's full. He can host Jack it. can help. They can have yep. their own little tiny podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys can talk about like fights at a park or something. Yeah. <laughs> sweet. And then she jumped off the oh, That would be so great because kids don't know how to tell stories. Like, like you know how we've started so far at the beginning and we're going mm. towards the end? They're like middle and beginning, middle, section part, and they're all over the place. Yep. They're impossible to follow. It's Completely adorable. different story, no context. Back to the yeah. beginning and middle. Yeah. They what do. a great contest like, that would be. Yeah. And they never finish, ever. The story no, is never yeah. finished. Yeah. Sounds like my wife. She is way too hot oh. for you. You watch your mouth. <laughs> I made a joke about being bad at sex. Yeah, I was going to say he burned yeah, himself. Yeah, that was a self-burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't finish. A... I get it. Yeah, okay. My bad. Was, that wasn't that funny. I'm sorry. Where's uh, Where's the dad when they're interviewing the oldest? I don't know. Somewhere. Which dad? Where's... Where's porno Steve when this is all going on? I don't know, somewhere. Fucking porno Steve. Because like, like you figure if he did like do something up there, you'd try and stop your kid from talking. And especially like cops probably shouldn't talk to four-year-olds without their parents present. So uh I mean they will. They'll they'll do anything to solve it, but I mean uh my my guess is that he consented to it. I don't remember, I don't remember that part, yeah. He didn't. He didn't groom them on what to say. That was obvious. Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard to get. It's hard to get your four-year-old kid to not say what you <laughs> what you oh, don't want sure. to say. It's real hard because they just they talk about whatever comes into their heads. My daughter's constantly like. My daughter's constantly at restaurants going like, "My mom's on her period." Like, no, not what we're supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, that's your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. She's a very open, honest person. When Jesse was about that age, we were at the supermarket and there was a, a, um, a Muslim guy in his full garb, you know, the, I don't know what it's called, you know, the dress thing that they wear yeah. with his, um, and <laughs> Jesse had a big white beard and Jesse just screams at the top of his lungs, Mom, look, it's Noah. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. It's sad that he was conditioned to think of Noah and not like someone way cooler. Gandalf. Oh, no. Fucking religion is ruining our children. Yeah. Gandalf would have been good. Yeah. Aaron was like, at another time, Aaron was, there was this um, African man. He was very, very, very dark. And Aaron was just yeah, like, be careful here, guys. Aaron was like, Mom! Why is that man made of chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I almost died. He cracked up laughing though. He thought it was incredible. He thought it I'm was sure so funny. I, of yeah. course. But she, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna die. Help me. <laughs> um, no, when I when I was when I was younger, uh, we always used to go to the same convenience store with our parents or whatever when we were kids. And um, I, I, I don't know how this happened or it came about, but my parents were really friendly with the guy in the store and they used to call him the brown man. Okay. And guess what he was? Yeah. He yeah. Was yeah. Brown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so <clears throat> I thought it was so normal that I started saying it outside of going to the yeah. store with my parents. Mm -hmm. And then my parents started getting mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like, what? what? <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys say it all the time. It's the brown man. We went to the brown man store the other day and we got a chocolate bar. Like that's yeah. double fucking standard. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's bullshit. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kids. My, Jack has oh, never God. ever done that. He has never embarrassed me in public. Saving it for when he's his teenager. Perfect. That's fine. That's fine. I'm getting <laughs> I'm gonna embarrass him so much fucking worse. Let me tell you, you've met me. Yeah, I'm he's sure you will, it up. <laughs> so uh but when I was a kid, uh my you know how like you used to people used to hire like a babysitter from a service? Yeah. Because now it's all like, you know, through recommendations, through social media, stuff like that. The babysitting service is really a thing of the past. But Mm -hmm. my parents hired this babysitter from a service. And this woman shows up. And this woman is big. Like, fucking huge fucking lady. I like big. (laughs) No. I like them chunky. I like them round. Big lady. Like and this. so I'm like standing next to my mom and I'm Willy like, Willy. you are so fat. <laughs> like just straight up. <laughs> Cause I never seen a person that fat before. Okay. It's crazy to me. <laughs> and then my parents fucking left me alone with her. <laughs> like I just fucking called her fat. She's gonna kill me. I love kids eat. so that's, much. That's good. Yeah, kids, kids uh, are amazing. So that's why it's awesome that they interviewed the kid because he will tell the whole story. Even if dad did yeah. fucking coach him on the way home, he didn't have enough time to condition him. He was saying everything if he could, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Kids get so fucking distracted though. Like mm. all the time, people are like, Jack, Jack, is your mommy nice to you? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, mm. no, I'm fucking not. <laughs> that was your opportunity. <laughs> okay. Fucking, you punted it, and it's okay. <laughs> oh, Anywho. dear. So why why with all this evidence that's very obviously showing foul play, why is this lovely gentleman not convicted or oh, in gosh. prison or... It's all circumstantial. They can't do... F- yeah, no physical yeah. evidence. Oh. They really can't. There was no... No body, no case. No, yes. No weapon, no... Fuck. No eyewitnesses. No eyewitnesses, yeah. Except for a four-year-old. Except for a four-year-old. And a four-year-old, you can't use them... Yeah, you can't use them in court. Like, it's impossible. You can't... Well, the the four-year-old didn't actually witness anything either. No, he just said mom was there and then mom wasn't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, nobody was like, mom was bleeding all over the couch and then we loaded her into the car and then we took her out into the fucking snowstorm and then we came back home yeah like yeah. nothing nothing useful um and obviously susan is completely unreachable still this is all really super fucking suspicious mm-hmm. and so on december 9th the police searched the home for something that would hopefully lead them to susan or at least give them a, some indication on whether or not she was okay and so they found her blood on the floor it was trace amounts, but they did find her blood on the floor. That's like good. That's this is some physical evidence. It's something, but she also lived there, so it's tricky. But you you could have made it work if it weren't for the fact that they also found DNA from an unidentified male. And unfortunately, uh, in practice, all that really did was exclude Josh. Yeah. So fuck. Uh, and they still it. don't know where that DNA came from. Interesting. Yeah, but couldn't have. Couldn't it have been from somebody that just stopped by their house? Oh, it could have been anyone, considering that it was Porno yeah, Steve. Yeah, that's what I mean. like, yeah. It's they would have like, known, uh, though, because it's a family member. If it was Porno well, Steve. He was, like, known. smashing shit up all the time and ruining their house and breaking shit. So they were probably having, like, repairmen, having to come over all the time and workmen and stuff. So it could have been anyone mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. yeah, it could have been lots that's, of people. And everyone oh, was behind fucked. this. Everyone who had been in the house, like... 100% would have been like yeah fuck yeah take my DNA go ahead do it whatever you gotta do narrow it yeah. down we'll find this bastard you know it wouldn't it was still unidentified to this day oh it is gosh. a big I think red herring but yeah it was enough unfortunately that any case they had against Josh now has to deal with this so uh they also found in the house uh, a life insurance policy taken out for Susan in the amount of $1.5 million. And they found the letter from Susan where she wrote that she feared for her life in the safety deposit box. 
That's not suspicious at all. No. Lots of people write fiction. <laughs> Lots of people overreact. Susan was also a writer. She kept journals her whole life. The house was crawling mm. with journals. And people write shit in their journals. That's the point of journals. You write the shit that you yeah. want to say or that you want to do, but you never would. Mm-hmm. Get, Creed thoughts. get it out of there. You know, sometimes your brain uh, as a person who writes, I just need to get it out. Like it's in there. Now I can, it's out. Now it's, I can, don't have to think about it anymore. It's, I can go back to that thought, you know? It's frustrating too, because technically without evidence, she could have just decided to take off. Right. And just yep. disappear. I mean, leaving the kids kind of crappy, but it's, a, it's like, an option. You know, though. If she, she fears for her life, you know, mm-hmm. actually you're right. That probably adds to the, to the she could have left she was scared for her life so she ran away right the letter could yeah. actually be- help out the story for uh, the case for her to actually be fucked off yeah and like you got it you know she did keep a ton of journals i'm sure a lot of it was just straight up bitching too about yeah. her marriage and about a creepy fucking father-in-law being a oh, dirty yeah. perv there's, there's a lot of that yeah. for sure yeah so they didn't have any reason to arrest him but he was, without a doubt, main suspect in Susan's mm-hmm. disappearance. And this was made even more obvious by the behavior after, after she went missing. He liquidated her retirement accounts. He canceled her pre-scheduled appointments with her chiropractor. He took the children wow. out of daycare. Even though the house was one spouse down, you're committing to a lot more time now. Mm. Yeah. And a coworker of Joshua's told the police that they had once had a conversation about how the best way to hide a body would be to throw it into an abandoned mine shaft in the Utah desert. Uh, f- being from a mining community, I would agree. A, a great way to get rid of a fucking body, is chuck it down a fucking 800 meter. Or two, two It'll be about this it. big by the time it gets down there. It would be hamburger and it would be gone in a month. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. And if there's one thing Utah has a fuck ton of, it's Mormons. <laughs> and okay, if there's two things, Utah has a lot of <laughs> LDS. Fucking Mormons and mine shafts. I want to, yeah. it's like Dungeons and Dragons, Mormons and mine shafts. Yeah, that's why the Mormons are there. They like to hide in the mountains, right? We figured this Mormons out. Mormons and mine shafts. <laughs> that sounds like a great new game, Celeste. M&Ms. Right? <laughs> Mormons, we'll make it. We'll make it. Unethical Dungeons and Dragons. We'll call it Mormons and Minecraft. Was that for some M and M's? It's like it's, it's kind of like snakes and ladders, but Mormons and mine shafts. So the Mormons go down, the shafts go up. No, Mormons <laughs> go up to the kingdom, and the mine shafts go oh, down. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is it mine go. shaft the <laughs> book that Hitler wrote about dicks? Oh God! You mean mine comp? No, uh, he, made it, he made oh, it. Oh, mine he, shaft. <laughs> mine shaft. Oh, fuck me. You got to clap for that one, Tyler. That was good. Oh, <laughs> that, was good. that was a whole lot better than he's <laughs> burning the candle at both ends. Oh. That made up for it. It's a good night. Burning. <laughs> Fucking Scott. Where are we at? Okay, after... Um, after they talked to him the first time, the police subpoenaed all of Josh's television interviews, both the aired parts and the unaired parts, and they studied his behavior in them in a way to prepare to bring him in for questioning again. But before the interview took place, Joshua lawyered the fuck up, mm-hmm. which he should anyway, whether he's guilty or not. Everyone, everyone in the world get a lawyer always always get a lawyer never talk to the cops they're not your friend they're there to Ephira. solve a crime they're there they don't care about you they're not your buddies just even if you did didn't do it they're gonna try and make it sound like you did okay just so you know especially mm-hmm. if you didn't do it get a fucking lawyer <laughs> always get a lawyer don't talk to them please don't we cannot stress this enough yeah didgeridoo don't do it didgeridoo fucking don't do it <laughs> so over the next month Joshua would take the kiddos up to live with Grandpappy Pervert and pack up the family home and move back to Payallup, Washington. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. (laughs) Payallup. And the boys lived with Stephen as well as Joshua's brother, Michael, and Joshua's Joshua's sister, Alina. 
And then Joshua rented out the family home that he still owned in Utah. And that was his source of income or his main source of income, I should say. Uh, So once they were settled in, little four-year-old Charlie spilled the beans to Miss Teacher that mommy was dead. But this wasn't taken very seriously. That could have been what he heard from other people, from police who didn't know that he was in earshot. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, kids say the darndest things. (sighs) So sad. You can't, kids are so honest, but they also like have such big imaginations. So it's hard to believe them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's yes, it sure can be. Yeah. But what's more disturbing is that little two-year-old Charlie was at daycare and he drew a picture of an adorable little van with an adorable little little family of three. And when asked about it by the daycare staff, he told them mommy was there too, but she was in the trunk. Oh. <sighs> but these were the ravings of confused children. They lost their mother. Poor children. Yeah. It's... The poor father. There's some things though that are like very specific, like a trunk. Like you could you could have said it was in the basement of a or a, like a, the mouth of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Then you're like, oh, okay, he's just dealing with trauma. But like a trunk, you know, yeah. it's a kid. It's a kid. It, it would do something more kiddish if it was a made up thing. But a trunk seems mm. too specific. Yeah, that's not whimsical imagination. That's land. what I mean. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that poor little Bubba. Poor, poor kids. They both, that's going to be like one of their first and all, like their memories. They'll probably remember that, you know, for the rest of their life and like just bits and pieces of it. Cause like, what's your first memory? Do you guys remember what your first memory is? I could tell yep. you mine. My f- thing I got is I was digging in a sandbox and I dug so deep I got to like water and I thought it was like the best thing like mom come check out I got yeah, right wow. to the water right like I that's my first memory ever but it's only that long like just that I, I, and then it goes just cuts little bits in here right so his their first memory could just be like mom getting slammed in the trunk you know yeah like, that's hard at two for sure you know that's so yeah. scary that's his like defining yeah. I think my first memory might have been uh my mom making me sing to like all of her friends or family or something she loved to do that she loved to make me sing mr sun to all the grown-ups no is that what's that that song i'd like to hear sun Sun, mr golden sun Sun. please shine down down on me you don't know that song that's so cute no Uh, that was great though i'm glad that i asked her (laughs) Wow, it's pretty happy go lucky. No, uh my my first uh memory was uh me throwing a rock at my cousin. <laughs> I bet that's their first memory too. It, yeah, yeah, our, la- our last memory. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> How hard you throw the rock? My last uh, memory. <laughs> um no, well, me and my other cousin, we were in a driveway and it was just all these like little stones or whatever, right? So like we were just like chucking those around, chucking those around, and then my sister and my other older cousin came out and said, Stop throwing rocks, stop throwing rocks. And we were like, No, and we kept throwing rocks, kept throwing rocks. And then she like came over and I just turned and like boom, boom. Yeah, and she had a pretty nasty scar <laughs> after that. So naughty uh, boy. That's boys. Yeah, it, was a little, it was a little baby rock. It wasn't like a. <laughs> right in the I didn't pick up face. like a boulder over my shoulder. And... Your dad is probably so fucking proud. He's like, "This is my boy, fucking headshot." Right? At, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, oh no, he was the one that. Yeah, no, that didn't end well. No. <laughs> Beat me real bad. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. <laughs> We were on vacation too, so that was a whole other thing. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. oh no! What do you do lashes. with your kids when they're pissing you off on vacation? You can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. The small closet. My parents put room. me out on the balcony <laughs> when we went to Disneyland. I pissed them off. I had to sleep on the balcony. Not sleep. They put me out you there. You guys, parents could afford the vacation. No, they just they were terrible with money. <laughs> oh. They give everybody <laughs> credit cards back then. <laughs> Oh my god. Sweet, we can travel wherever we want. I have to go shortly to be a good parent and take my my pisshead son to the liquor store because he's got to go to a party. Not my four year old. <laughs> Not my Isn't four year old. One in the afternoon though. Like what what is time does this party start? Jesus getting why scared. do you need to take your pisshead son? He's a grown ass man. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have a fucking license. How? Then he doesn't get to drink. 
How, how many kilometers away is the closest liquor store? Um, oh, he could walk there in ten minutes, but I've got to drop. I'm there. You go. I'm dropping him off at his girlfriend's house and stuff too, because I'm no nice. wonder he doesn't have his license. Yeah, I know. It's just, just an enabling mother. Probably doesn't even have fucking ID. She's got a boot for him because he has no fucking license to show am, the fucking am... liquor store clerk. Does he have Velcro on his shoes still? <laughs> <laughs> All right, mom, ready to go. Take me a liquor store. No, I had to one time. No. Let's go get my Bacardi. For, for ages, I had to, he had to have Velcro on his shoes because we were going up an escalator and he hadn't tied his shoelaces up and his shoelaces got stuck in the escalator. No fucking way. Yeah. I'm sorry I'm laughing. But... No, it was, it was funny afterwards. It was funny afterwards, but before that, I was terrified that his legs were going to get ripped off. He was only like three. It was so scary. Well, his legs didn't get ripped off. He can use them and walk to the fucking liquor store. Mom, yeah. Mom, after we go to the liquor store, can we get ice cream? <laughs> I'm not buying it for him. I'm Mom, not I want to put rum him. in my ice cream. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give Christy credit here because I personally do not have kids, but I feel like if and when I do, I will be the same person as you. You bet your fucking ass. My parents never gave me a ride to the fucking liquor store. <laughs> And it's also right. It's raining, so I don't want to make him walk. Um, I'm not that much of a cunt. <laughs> can you give me a piggyback ride down to the car? Can you come wipe my bum? No, he'd have to piggyback me. He's like, he's like, he's like six foot four. I'm like six foot three. Then he has huge strides. He'll get there. Yo, in- it's like thirty steps. He'll be there. Five minutes. Okay, okay. We've, we've we've trashed him long enough. <laughs> If no, you know he's what? a good it's boy. Not my fault. We're just it's not my fault. Okay, we were supposed to have uh, baby roasting, and there's yeah. been no baby roasting, and so now we just have to roast grown ass men who need rides to the liquor store from mommy. Yeah, <laughs> those, are, those are babies. Mum, mum. He is. Mum. Yeah. Do you, do you mind, uh, <laughs> mum? Can we go have a pint? Can you buy a pint for us, mum? Can you get us a pint? <laughs> is, that, is this your Australian accent, Richard? That's a thing. Look, bye bye. I don't even. I don't even know what the fuck's happening. I don't even know what the fuck's going on mom, here. I'm <laughs> being a jackass. Can you, can you come wipe me bum, mom? <laughs> How long do you have, Christy? How long do you have? Oh, you like taxi? none, none times. Very leaving. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go in a sec. Don't leave me here with a bunch of dudes. Oh, fuck I'm crying. <laughs> My hair is long. Just pretend I'm a girl. Are we done with the story, Celeste? Sorry. Oh, there's there's so much. What do you mean are we done with the story? Nothing happened. Okay. There's so no, much. No, we're going. not. Okay. Can you do one of these before you go to go like? <gasps> then we'll just throw it in when that's supposed to be in there. <gasps> I'll do that one. And oh my god! And no fucking why? And that's gross. Oh, also, uh, water prick. Water prick. There we go. Okay, we're good. Yeah, nah, fuck that guy. All right, that's enough Australian colloquial wisms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, love you guys. Bye, bye, bye. 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 Fucking finally. Okay. No. <laughs> God. All right, all right, all right. All right, let's go. Okay. Okay, so... Some people believed that Josh was like a total victim. He was being fucking railroaded by the cops. Uh, in early 2010, a website emerged, susanpowell.org, and it appeared on the surface to be totally dedicated to defending Joshua and positing theories about what really happened to Susan. One theory was that Joshua was being targeted by the church because he left. Another was that Susan's family was in cahoots with Joshua's estranged sister to make sure that he was put away. And then the disappearance was just a coincidence. But uh, another theory, which is actually a lot more interesting, is that her disappearance was connected with the disappearance of a journalist who went missing the same week. And so they speculated that the two had fallen in love in secret and fucked off into the Utah sunset. Mm. But uh, Stephen is actually this man. I didn't write his fucking name now because I'm stupid. Stephen Kohler or something. Stephen. Stephen is still missing too. 
So interesting. Maybe. Wait, I would tie. I would tie theory one with te- theory three. What's railroaded and ran off with another man? No, I think it was the church, but the church made it look that way. So two people went di- missing. Oh wow, you're right. Rig- uh, if you don't, okay, you don't think it's uh, Josh? You think that the theory is on the website or okay, interesting. Yeah, like here's what I think. Okay, if if it's not the obvious one, uh, I think there is a uh, journalist serial killer. Plain and simple. Stock Susan journalist. wasn't a journalist. She wrote in journals. <gasps> Boom Dude. connection right there. Dude. That's how my dad makes connections to things. I'm just. Dude. Dun, dun, dun. Journalism. Uh, the interesting thing about Stephen is that he is actually connected to Bountiful BC. Really? That's news. St- news. That's a new one for me. He it- worked for a newspaper that was Bountiful based. Huh. And I will be writing his story for a Patreon exclusive bonus episode. Is it full of incest? you'll see <laughs> come find out it's uh something all right we'll have to you know what I can, i'll upgrade my tier right now yeah <laughs> he's like i can't wait <laughs> so uh it is very 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 heavily suspected that the website was largely contributed to by joshua and his father stephen powell no fucking why so the website only became this platform of support because they flooded it with their theories but joshua and steven openly professed that susan wasn't hurt she wasn't dead she had definitely run off with another man because the marriage was in rough shape and she was able to abandon her kids because she was mentally ill and they managed to support this by citing um passages from her journals And they would read those to news outlets. So in some of the entries, Susan apparently claimed that she was falling in love with Joshua's dad. And so that kind of set her up as like somebody who's capable of being unfaithful and things like that. And then in other entries from when she was in high school, the boy craziest of times, she expressed feelings that were unholy (laughs) and like seemed kind of mentally unstable, but also... That's fucking puberty, man. You are mentally unstable the whole fucking time. Brain's changing, yeah. 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 So the police actually finally had to file a fucking injunction to make them stop doing this. And then they made them either destroy the journals or return them to Susan's family. Yeah, that was a big thing too. I forgot about the journal thing. (laughs) But I I don't think that's fair because once, like you mentioned earlier, where it's somebody's private information that the reason that they did all of that is because they don't feel like they can voice that out to other people. And now you're taking that and you're using it against them in some way or another. Uh, It's it's more to use it to as like a a backup for them, right? It's not to to badmouth her per se. It's to help them out, right? It's it's a survival tactic. It's being dickheads. It's just it's 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 private information at the end of the day. It wasn't supposed to be exposed to anybody. Yeah, I, I I guess, but they they think she's never coming back, right? So this is yeah, junk, yeah, this yeah. is don't... junk in my house. I don't she yeah. clearly left me. She's with another man. Didn't care about her journals enough. So fuck her. I'm gonna read these journals out. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they definitely had grounds for the injunction for that reason. Yeah, that this mm-hmm. was her her private documents for all intents and purposes, and they had no legal right to be sharing it. Yeah. Um. So in 2010, the police got some new information that gave them a suspect besides Joshua, who really was the only suspect. And of course, that suspect was Stephen Powell, his father. Oh my God. They found the evidence on his computer of how obsessed he was with Susan. His computer had 4,500 pictures of Susan that Stephen had taken without her knowledge or at least without her acknowledgement. And it included tons of images of just close-ups of specific areas on her body. And whether that's tits, ass, legs, or it's like ear, elbows, feet, I don't know. But it was a lot of them. That's gross. And is it at nighttime? Or are they all taken midday? Or is he like creeping through a window? Like, is she walking gardening? Or is it like when she's trying to go to sleep? 
or is it both? I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I think you said earlier just walking around, we'd follow with the camcorder. So it's he probably would. like, oh, probably all of the above. Well, I mean, it's forty five hundred. Yeah. That's a lot. Well, still shots from that. Yeah. Uh, he's a creepy yeah. asshole. This guy. Something very yes, very off putting. And then they obviously found the love songs and shit that he posted because yeah. he did it from his IP address. So, um. This line of investigation also led them to add Michael Powell, Joshua's brother, to the list of suspects. Michael had sold his vehicle shortly after Susan went missing and then weirdly looked up satellite photos of the lot that he had sold it to. And so the police found the vehicle and a sniffer dog indicated the presence of decomposition in the trunk. But sniffer dogs are not science in police work. They are very good boys, but they perform a function that leads them to closer inspect something. And the inspection was inconclusive. Yeah. I, I, sniffer dogs are so crazy. They can, they, they got some that are trained so well that they can smell decay from like 60 years ago or like a hundred years ago. It's fucking bonkers. These dogs are so well trained and they're so, and they're very accurate from, yeah. uh, from what I understand, there's like, if they're barking at they're, they're indicating is what they call it. It's not wrong. It's like, so not wrong, but just to be able to find what they're barking at sometimes is unreal. It's hard because a hundred year old fucking corpse, right? Like there's probably not much left, you know? Yeah. yeah there's some really cool documentaries. They're trained. Like you see them too, when they, they're made, training them, they'll leave like steaks and treats out. Yeah. Ignore them completely to go yeah. wherever they're like, that's so cool. Yeah. I don't know how they do that? It's so cool that they can do with dogs, man. Like, uh, especially these sniffer dogs. They're cool. I like them. Well, yeah. And they're using them to fucking detect cancer and shit, too. Dogs are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, think dogs are that amazing. I mean, cats are better. Fuck but... right off. No, 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 no. I just recently got one and it doesn't know how to bring the ball back to you. So it loves to run after the ball. So yours is a dum dum. Big deal. Yeah, I don't have an issue with it, but you guys are like, dogs are so fucking smart. They're like, cool, is what we're saying. Like, uh, mine. Some dogs are smarter than you, Bobby. Like, much smarter than you. Lots um, of dogs are smarter than me, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> you got dogs that can sniff out drugs. I can't fucking smell what's in this room right now. Like, <laughs> I gotta pay for drugs. The dog technology these days is out, out of the, this world. The little robotic dog they have there? Oh, don't start with that. Nope. That's yeah, we're not. I'm not going down fucking pet man. No, I no. love that fucking robot. I fucking it love it. Make me shit my pants, man. Is that it, came at me in the street. It can run upstairs. Is that the one That's from like so MIT crazy. or whatever? Yeah, Boston Dynamic. Yeah, yeah, Boston Dynamics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that uh, did you so see creepy. the fucking video of them dancing? I played Silent Hill. Okay, That's why do they? Okay. Why do they need to dance? You don't need to prove that they dance. So, I fucking watched that probably a hundred times. <laughs> no, give them a function. Like, what are they doing? Yeah. Make Bobby, them do entertaining that. me. You know why they're dancing? I'll tell you. It's to soften their image because robots yeah, are coming know. robots are going to be all around us very soon we all need to be able to accept them right now you're what you're doing is like fuck those things and that's what they're scared of so they got to make them dance got to make them all cute so everybody goes like look at the cute robot i want to buy one and then we'll all have a fucking robot eventually that's true and they're also doing that to demonstrate the uh advanced hydraulic tech uh technology in them yeah, yeah. the way that they can move and support weight and get back up when they fall down and run upstairs like it's honestly it's so fucking cool that's well, that shit doesn't scare me at all yeah and just understanding terrain my problem is this is a gentle slope into them taking over i'm not gonna get into that though <laughs> yeah, I've, I've always said this i have a joke about this that i don't do often but i should about how we should be nicer to our electronics and stuff now because they will be taking over soon and they will remember <laughs> they will remember <laughs> I, I always say thank you to the like, yeah, echo never yell at the toaster if it burns your toast it will remember it's like the weird kids in high school that you were just always really nice to because it's like, if he ever flips out, at least I was on his good side, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Start shooting people. The school <laughs> shooter vibe, people. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was Elon Musk that said, you have no reason to fear AI when your phone can't autocorrect duck. Yeah. <laughs> or like, whatever, you know, you know what I mean? But basically, because autocorrect is so fucking stupid, you have yeah, no but reason to fear AI. But phones are like the, the mass-produced version of what they can actually do with technology. Yeah. 
true. You know? That's true. But they still have an operating like learning curve. The iPhone learns your patterns over time. Yeah. Yeah. It learns your patterns, but it doesn't specifically like know you, know you. Neither does the robot. <laughs> yeah. My thing, the reason the AI doesn't scare me as much is because we're flawed as fuck humans and we're the ones making it. They'd have to make it to themselves for it to get over our stupidity. Do you know what I mean? We're never yeah, going to think... make it past our dumbness for it to get too out of control. But they don't only have to learn off of us. What else are they learning from? The fucking aliens or the dogs? Oh, the sniffer hey, hey. dogs. They're learning off the hey. sniffer dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> Oh, but we were getting so <laughs> sidetracked. Always, all the time. It's a good, it's a good tangent, though. I like that tangent. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll get back into it here. Uh, in late 2011, Grandpappy Pervert was arrested on charges of voyeurism and possession of child abuse material. So we can breathe a partial sigh of relief here. The materials in his possession depicted young women teenagers and while that is still horrible exploitation charlie and brayden were likely not molested thank god you know they already saw that absolutely they already saw enough they don't need to be put through anymore definitely uh joshua was actually also implicated in this investigation but he he was a subject of interest he 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 wasn't really involved um or at least not enough that they could actually charge him with anything related yeah. his dad his, his porno father. steve steve got yeah, the... yeah 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 porno steve is his last name powell yeah yes should we call him porno powell yeah porno powell <laughs> got more of a ring i'm sorry it's been bugging me this whole time I porno just... powell <laughs> fine <laughs> porno powell is arrested okay so susan's father was given custody of the boys after Stephen was arrested on the terms that Joshua had to find another residence if he wanted the children back. So Joshua did rent a house, but upon surprise inspection, it was determined that he actually never moved into the house. He still continued to reside at Porno Powell's home. And he, they determined he would likely do so if the courts did release the children to him. And so he was then forced to undergo a series of evaluations before they would reconsider. So the court ordered shrink determined that Joshua was an adequate enough parent and his employment history was acceptable. And he had no history of criminal record or domestic violence, which of course doesn't mean he wasn't a violent, abusive criminal. It just means that he wasn't actually caught, but The shrink acknowledged that Joshua had a tendency to refute his own shortcomings in a way that is abnormal. A normal person would accept and acknowledge these own shortcomings in themselves, whereas he didn't. Uh, He was also overbearing with the children, and he was defensive and paranoid and displayed narcissistic traits. What a prick. So he concluded that Joshua should be permitted supervised visitation only with his sons and several times a week was okay um after this happened his brother michael started a website that claimed that susan's family were abusing and neglecting the boys and that the welfare authorities were actually in on it uh and this was all somehow a way to keep the local authorities harassing joshua and framing him in the investigation but uh internet jesus or whoever the fuck took it down within a few days I, I am going to say one thing that I do think is kind of nice about this family is that they stick together, you know? <laughs> <laughs> all for one and one for all, you know? Is... Yeah. <laughs> Pass around, sure. The, the wealth period question mark. I don't know. Do you not remember that uh, I mentioned that he had an estranged, sis- estranged sister who yeah. hated him yeah. and was constantly slamming him? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So apparently they don't stick well, no, together. No, no, the guys. Bros before sister hoes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dicks before chicks, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this guy gets it. Yeah. This guy gets this it. Is the, <laughs> this is the most <laughs> testosterone we've ever had on an episode. So what's up, boys? <laughs> 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 Celeste probably got the biggest dick. Absolutely. All it's of us. fucking huge. It's called a clit. What it's called a clit when it's on a woman, okay? Don't have one of those. She's a man. She already told you this. Man. Wig. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have Beard. some pictures to delete from my computer. 
If we're clear, <laughs> you've made me confused. <laughs> keep me confused. Keep me curious. I'm upset. I'll be back in about five minutes. I, you know I what? Start this you, out. you never know. You never know. You know, one day you might meet a man. <laughs> Something might happen. You'll fall in love. That's what happened to Christy. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm married, but yeah. Maybe. <laughs> So is she? <laughs> never. Well, I mean, is the whole point of saying you never know is that I you don't know. Wake up, gender fluidity, all of a sudden, and figure it out. Oh, just wait, buddy. Some <laughs> guy from know. Telus might show up to check your cable, and you'll be like, I "Check my cable." Thought you had a wife. That... <laughs> I was just going along with the bit. <laughs> oh fuck! Jeez, oh, Louise. Oh, oh, she! Oh, darn it! Oh, oh heck! Oh gosh! <laughs> gosh darn it to heck! <laughs> oh bother! Oh dear! Okay, so there were no major developments uh, in the years between Susan's disappearance and the year 2012. I mean, unless you count like the whole like dad being arrested and things, but that's not related to the case. This is related to the actual disappearance. Really, no major developments whatsoever. Uh, but in January of 2012. 400 images of simulated which means like cartoons illustrations animations whatever uh child abuse material along with bestiality and incest were found on the computer that the powell family had owned and so this was hugely sensationalized as having been joshua's collection and the authorities took that to the court as well so that he would have to wait even longer to get his kids back and also just kind of to fucking put him on blast for being a pervert yeah um it did come out later actually i believe it was cold podcast that made this announcement uh susan had actually bought that computer secondhand and it was the previous owner's collection that was deleted but not forgotten oh shit but joshua never looked at it yeah and she he didn't know that she even bought a computer because he was so controlling he wouldn't let her use the car he wouldn't let her use the anything even his computers and stuff so she secretly saved money and bought that computer from a friend from work so no one would even know and then then yeah oh jeez like, terrible wow. fucking luck on her side right like but she doesn't know anything about computers he doesn't teach her she was just wanted to go on facebook she wanted to have like a normal yeah. social life she, she wasn't looking at all that stuff is what you're saying anyone who buys a computer is not expecting that to be on but even but put it this way like, she wouldn't even if it was sitting there out in the public saying child abuse material on a folder on the desktop she'd probably been like what is that little folder thing hmm. uh, do i get to facebook from there no okay i'll just go to this browser she didn't really know much about the computers or anything like so even if it's it's an interesting it's weird that that's what happened right <laughs> that's, all i'm thinking now is like little files that say like kid stuff yeah animal stuff taxes runescape yeah runescape <laughs> <laughs> runescape cosplay <laughs> um i knew this one yeah and so you know there's this little part of you that's just like yes i don't care if it wasn't his porn now he's blasted as a fucking pervert haha -ha, yeah. fucker and you'd be wrong. And this is why. Somewhere between one and two weeks later, Joshua's sons were brought to the home by a social worker. Her name was Elizabeth Griffin Hall. And she was there for a scheduled supervised visit. So the boys would have been five and seven now. They ran ahead of the social worker to see dad. And he stood with the door open, arms waiting to collect his boys, his pride and joy. And when they reached the door, just steps ahead of the social worker, Joshua swooped them inside and shut the door in her face. And so she's now stuck outside. She's supposed to be supervising this visitation. This is bad for her career. This is possibly bad for the boys. It's just bad. So she bangs on the door. She's like, you're going to get your children fucking taken away from you, dude. If you do this, I'm going to let it go if you open the fucking door. But he did not. And she could hear inside that one of the boys was crying and she noticed that she could actually smell gas, like gasoline. Yeah, not farts. Not farts. No. Okay, definitely not farts. Is this when she calls 911? Like, sorry, maybe you're about to say that. 
Yes, it is. She then is outside. She calls 911. She then goes to her car because she needs some information on the address. And so she's sitting in her car outside the house. She's on the phone with the police. Dispatcher says someone's going to come. They hang up. She calls back again shortly after. I want to mention this just because it pissed me off. Both of these dispatchers were fucking assholes to this whim- this woman. They didn't listen to a fucking thing no. she said. They they when she first spoke, they thought that it was her who was supposed to have supervised visitation with her own kids. And so they immediately started treating her like trash, like garbage. Yeah. But then she was like, "I work for the fucking city. I am a social worker." And she had wow. to do this 10 fucking times. Yeah, it's a bad, it's a bad 911 call. It's uh it's super sad because I, I think it was like, I don't know how long the call was, but like near the end, she finally figures it out. Like, fuck, man, it's she told you five times. Come on, yeah. just listen yeah. for fuck's sakes. It's even like yeah. just send cops there, even if you know somebody's dicking around with you or like you don't believe them or something, send a cop there to figure it out. Yeah, well, at one point the dispatcher was like, you can, it's not a supervised visit if you can't supervise, you can't supervise yourself. Who's supervising? And she's like, I'm supervising. I'm I am the social supervisor. social worker, yeah. It was, it was, oh my God, infuriating to listen to. It's about 10 minutes between both calls. It's oh not horribly long. Yeah, and she slams so. the door right in his fucking face. Or he slams his, yeah. her, uh, his door right in her fucking face. She, she couldn't do anything, man. You know, so yeah. she called 911 like, this is my protocol. I would assume that's the protocol, right? She has a, a checklist of things. If she Normally, could, uh, I think she would call her supervisor first. Or yeah. uh, like parole, like, you know, parole officer kind of deal. Yeah. First before the police. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing too, though. You know, we're quick to sort of demonize her for not being on top of this. Or at least they were. I wasn't. The, they had had dozens and dozens and dozens of supervised visits already and he was always on his best behavior yeah. he'd never done anything like this before she had no reason to worry about being a couple steps behind him yeah mm-hmm. i just would like to point out too uh to all the people that listen that you know think we need to get rid of cops uh this is what social workers do and then they still have to call the cops <laughs> <'Cause> that's <laughs> i agree replacing <laughs> like, social workers yeah yeah right. no that's not gonna work. Um, no, but I mean, like this could have been. Uh, anyways, so just keep going, then I'll talk a little bit more about it. Because okay, so she calls back a second time. She calls because the back of the house exploded, and I'm I'm not exaggerating. Fucking exploded. Kaboom. Kaboom. Gas, gas explodes. It's not fucking cool at all. <laughs> it doesn't, it's not, uh, when you see people making like in movies and stuff, like just take, making a line of gasoline and like doing whatever gas could work like that. Or it fucking gets in the air and just explodes in your fucking face. It's not, uh, it's not as easy to light a fire with gas without hurting yourself as you might think. <laughs> he had also Super opened flammable. up the gas mains in the house with a hatchet. This is another thing he had also done. Actually, so the entire gas line exploded too. So this was a big kaboom. There are at least three people inside this house, two of them children under the age of 10. Yeah. She calls back. She's talking to the dispatcher. You calling about the house was that's on fire? It's not fucking on fire, lady. It exploded. Boom. Well, why did the people go back in the house? They didn't go back in the house. They were already in the house. It went boom. I smelled gas. Oh my god. Why did you let them go back in the house? Are you saying that he did this intentionally? Yes! What the fuck do you think I'm telling you? God, these fuck all you should be fired. You should be fired. It's infuriating. That those calls are infuriating. It, it, it's infuriating, but at the same time, and I'm not sticking up for the, the people who have to take these calls, but they take a lot of calls every single day. Sure. Yeah. And like maybe, you know, let, let, let's say even 20% of them are just like bullshit, horseshit calls kind of thing. I know they're supposed to treat everyone the same, but I'm sure at a certain point you do get fed up. And when somebody calls and says like, oh, they're not letting me in the house. It's like, oh, fuck, what are these people again? All right. And, and I do, uh, I, I do sympathize at certain points, but Bobby, you have conversations with people all the time. You talk to a lot of people. Do you just yeah. 20% of the time decide I'm going to talk to them like fucking cunts? Fuck you. Oh, how's it going, Sally? Fuck you. 
Uh, yeah, no, what did you just say? I wasn't listening to you. I was doing whatever the fuck else I want to do. There's ways that you can be shitty at your job and still be nice. You don't have to be yeah. a biatch, right? You don't have to talk to people like that. You can listen to people when they talk. And, and if you're getting tired and you're getting to the point where you're getting angry like that, you have a very important job. Maybe it's break time. Maybe it's time to take a shit. Maybe you go home for that day. It's not a, yeah. this isn't a joke. This shit is serious. No, no, for sure. No. And like, like, like too, at work, if it's, if anything, it's like, you take it in and you're like, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And then when they walk away, you're like, fucking asshole fucking wants me to do that again. Jesus. Yeah. No, for sure. But you don't, you never go like, I'm done now. Cause you'd be fired. If 20% of the time you were an asshole to the people you're working with, you'd be fucking fired. And that's also yeah, yeah, yeah. saying, right. You should be fired. You don't talk. Yeah. To yeah. Yeah. Yep. You don't, you don't do that. It's just not how it's done. At the end of the day, though, it must be a rough job to do being taking taking in all of those. Yeah, yeah. Taking it has the highest day. turnover rate of any other job, and yeah. it's not surprising. It's hard. It's stressful. You hear horrible things, and there's obviously a lot of bias here. This initial dispatcher was very biased against her because she couldn't give him the address right away, and so she was like, "I got to go to my car and get it." And he's like, what the "Fuck, you don't know your fucking address," kind of thing. And then she's talking to him. Yeah. She's saying. I'm here for a supervised visit. This is Joshua Powell. He's implicated in the murder or the missing woman, Susan Powell. Uh, this is why I'm here. This is what happened. The kids are this age. Mm-hmm. And then she goes, are you still there? Because he's not responding. And he goes, just waiting for the address. He wasn't listening to a fucking word she said. Wow. There's there's problems before this even sh- happens, though. Like, if you think about this, if you got your kids taken away from you because of something like this like, or anything, really, and you only get supervised visits, why the fuck do we bring them to their house? Why isn't it a neutral location? Why are we letting him have so much power in this situation? There should have been a boardroom or a... Or a, a uh, a playpen somewhere because they're young kids get them a, a, rent them some video games in a little office somewhere or go for lunch not in his house it, it makes no sense yeah. to me yeah a public place kind of thing so there's other people around yeah because you're you're being accused of a very uh serious child yeah. porn first of all or child yeah. abuse material first of all and second of all you, the disappearance of your wife those two things are very major things i can understand if you were slinging crack on the corner and you wanted to have them over to the house uh on pr- whatever because you, you're a crackhead or something cool whatever yeah. but this guy's a, a psychopath this guy should not be left yeah. alone with anyone never mind little kids especially with child abuse material are you serious yeah the other thing too uh in regards to the nine the dispatchers uh, everyone who works in that kind of industry, right? Like uh, Bobby was saying, you deal with all these people, you know, like you get tired. That's your job. You know what I mean? As an officer, you get called to the same house for domestic calls three times a day. You still have to go there and be a police officer, right? Just because you're, you've, you've dealt with this crap for however long you have or how many people have called in that day to completely ignore all the other facts that you were told and just, you know, still waiting for that address. I haven't heard heard the calls obviously, but um, that kind of stuff is what can get people killed. And if you can't do that, you shouldn't be working there. Well, it's like you're saying, it's one of those jobs where you can't have a bad day. You know, a a lot of other jobs you are allowed to like, okay, today's a shitty day. I'm not going to get that much done. But if you have a bad day on jobs like that or being a cop or being a firefighter or something like that. Being a, it, being a fucking underground miner, dude, like being yeah, anything yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where anybody else's life is at risk because of your job, mm-hmm. you should not yeah. be able to have a bad day. And if you do have a bad day, they should be more sympathetic with you. I know the operators don't have it as good as they should. They should be able to take a day off whenever they want and get yeah. paid a uh, reasonable amount of times. You know what I mean? Because it is hard. Fuck. Imagine hearing a kid like my mommy's beating my dad like four times a day. That would be hard. That'd be hard for anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Be hard for me, for sure. Uh, I like to joke around and stuff, but I'm, I'm, I'm very much sensitive to this oh, kind of stuff. You're a big sure. softy, Richard. Well, I, I, to a point for sure. I, I'm not going to deny yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is a lot, a lot similar to me for our, uh, Deborah, Fucking Christ, I'm blanking on names. The 911 call up yes. did. Deborah Stevens. Yeah, Deborah that was Stevens. actually a very good one, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this brings me back to that a little bit too here because like I said with her, this is a little bit different, but um, 
she probably would have died anyway. Yeah. These kids, this explosion would have happened anyway. Mm-hmm. But it's always going to be a little bit your fault. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any more about the explosion and stuff like that? Because I have some stuff maybe that you didn't know, but I don't want to root it if you have it. I just have the basic gist. He cut holes in the gas line. Uh, okay. The only other piece of information that I do have here is that all three of them, uh, the explosion was deliberate, obviously. Yeah. All three of them died from carbon monoxide poisoning. That was their actual cause of death. But the house had been doused in gasoline and both of the boys had been attacked around the head with a hatchet before yeah. Joshua lost consciousness. That's what I was going to say. They, they, He fucking hit them with the fucking axe. Like, what a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, nah, fuck that guy. Coward coward he is a coward because of the state of everything before we get into speculation here because of the state of the bodies and things like that it is up to speculation whether it happened before they died or after if this was a measure that he took to ensure that they were fully dead before they started to burn something a a kindness whatever because he did it he gave them head wounds you know or if this was just he hit them first and then lit the house up. We don't we don't know what he did. Or you could have just given them to the social worker, went back in the house and did that to yourself. That's exactly this whole thing. Or you could yeah. just admit that you fucking killed your fucking wife yeah. and you could go and serve life in prison where you belong. I think death is... Well, great. I mean, where he is now is better. No, it's not. I disagree. I disagree too. Yeah, it's way too easy a way out for fuckers like this to die. It's a piece of shit thing to do to everybody else you know there's so many other people that now they build the uh, susan's not gonna be anyways i don't know what you're gonna say for, i don't want to ruin some shit but like she's pretty much a lost cause now those two kids just got murdered because you didn't feel like owning up to you being a fucking psycho uh yeah right like then there's the the grandma and grandpa they were just trying to help the kids they're ta- that's why they're they were living with them like the grandma and grandpa were about to be parents again you know they're mm-hmm. demolished they're crushed uh there's a whole lds community and i don't because that's where they lived after they went back into their uh commune? utah place right it's not a commune no they just live in lds country that's all they're super nice okay. people these these uh susan's parents seem very reasonable and nice from what i've heard and seen Okay, um, yeah. And there's so many people just because some dickwad couldn't fucking tell the truth. Just tell the truth, man. Just do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or not kill her in the first place would also have been acceptable. Yeah. yeah. No, that's the that's the <laughs> ultimate goal, but I mean yeah. <laughs> after, you, after you fucking make that mistake, shit happens so fast, right? Murdering your wife could take 3 seconds, 1 second. You know, and then you're like, fuck, you just snapped or whatever the fuck ended up happening. It's like Bernie TD. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I think that's why, like, for me, at least I like started you know, listening to true crime po- podcasts. And I liked them. It's just the idea that like you listen to it, like, like, how could somebody do that? It's like, oh, I'm not a psychopath. That's good. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's part of it. Comforting, sure. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, I thought I was crazy all this time, but I would never do something like that. Yeah. When, when your life feels like shit, you go listen to somebody else get murdered. OK, my life's not that yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. It really could be worse. Could yeah. be worse. Yeah. Yeah, uh, dying was an easy way out. And you can assume based on the timeline, it is all speculation, which I know I say all the time, but uh, he did this because he was... He was scared in the corner. He was outed in society. You do not... You would much rather be a murderer than a pedophile. Oh, fuck You bet your ass. Yeah. This was going to get ugly, and he knew it. Yeah. Yeah, he... uh they also like they you're right they did have him cornered and yes going to jail as a pedophile is bad but they also like i wonder because they i don't know if you talk about this at all but they had some a lot of stuff they couldn't decrypt like date like hard drives they could not decrypt of his and i wonder if they they were just about to figure it out and whatever was on that was going to make it even worse for him like i feel like that was this terrifying part for him was that hard drive that he had encrypted was about to get decrypted because they were going to get the password off of him and he was done it, whatever mm-hmm. it was like this guy yeah i imagine finding that kind of material on one 
computer in the house is grounds enough to get a warrant for every single password. Yeah, he knows he knows what uh, his his uh, his dad was like. He, he like, you know what I mean? His dad probably had a bunch. Of, he lived with his dad. His dad used his computers and shit. He yeah. probably if it wasn't him, it was probably his dad who had a bunch of child porn, but it's still not going to look good for him. Right. Like mm-hmm. he would fuck either way. And it's still uh, your computer after. Yeah. And after all of this, now I realize that I we all probably shouldn't watch porn with our dads because this is how you turn out. <laughs> all right. I was saving that for his 60th birthday, but maybe, maybe. I'll rethink something nicer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Um... Save it for the 70th. He won't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so just before Josh did this, he sent an email out to his friends and relatives, a mass email, telling them how to handle his affairs and to say goodbye. Before he died, he donated $7,000 along with all of his children's belongings to local charities. His brother, Michael, committed suicide a year later. His father was released in 2017 and then died in 2018. Susan's family received a settlement of $98 million from the state of Washington after the murder of their grandsons under the supervision of one of their employees. And Susan Powell has never been found. There are a lot of places to hide a body in Utah. Okay, I'm still stuck on the $98 million. Yeah, sometimes you want your grandkids to get killed, eh? Like, sometimes you think, like, oh, okay, no, 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 wasn't going there. No, but I'm just, like, I'm shit-shocked at the idea that, like, I understand that there there is no, like, money or monetary value, like, to a child kind of thing, right? Oh, no, there is. 44 million each. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, how can you, like, that is a ridiculous amount of money that, like, most people living right now do not need to survive for the rest of their lives. Yeah, well, they shouldn't have put, left those kids running to that house instead of finding a neutral location. I'm sorry, every dime is earned by that grandparents, those grandparents. Yeah, no, like I said, it's not that I have a problem. Like, it's just a, it's a strangely there's large a, amount of money. There's an argument, Bobby. There's an argument that like that $98 million or whatever, 88, 98 million dollars could have, yeah, 98 could have went to, uh, to somewhere a lot more productive and help um, keep roads up and, and help other little poor kids. There is an argument that this, that is a lot of money for two children that are gone for an old couple. But yeah. the other argument is that if you don't slam them, their fucking dicks in a door with as much money as fucking possible, they'll just do it again. Cause it doesn't cost that much. So this way it pushes for reform. You want to get lots of fucking uh, $98 million fines. Just keep doing what you're doing. If not, Fucking put them in a goddamn library and let them read some fucking books, you morons. It's a state. It's not like they got $98 million from like a hospital. This is a whole fucking state. Yeah. All these people are paying taxes. Uh, well, actually, probably made it was, dead, no, it was like, Washington. I was like, oh no, this is Utah. They're religious. Most of them aren't said, paying yeah, taxes, yeah. <laughs> but this is, this is Washington. So they were, yeah. these people are paying taxes. The rich fucking people. This is Washington. Very, 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 very wealthy men yep. are paying taxes. Yep. A lot of taxes. They can afford it. This is nothing. This is a drop in the fucking bucket. Couldn't you put some of that money towards, like Richard was saying earlier, giving those people taking the phone calls days off? Stuff like that. They should have, they could have saved, they could have saved $92 million by just doing that probably. By giving these extra time off and more pay for these people, because it yeah. wouldn't be such high turnover rate either if it wasn't a twenty dollar an hour job to be listen to people die on the phone. You know what I mean? I like, just I don't understand the idea of like giving money to somebody as compensation for something. What else? It's not going to help. It, well, that's what I mean though. It, it, there's nothing you can do except for the justice of something, which he's dead, so you're not going to get the justice for it. So there's nothing that can really happen about it. So the best you can do is get at least, you know, the very least that the government could do at the end of the day is pay for some sort of therapy or you know counseling oh. or whatever and whatever that's else cheap. you need. That is cheap. That's my point. Ninety-eight million dollars sends a fucking message. It sends a message. Think about it too. <sighs> like if you your your spouse dies right? You have life insurance. You get paid out because you're going to be dealing with grief. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to go to counseling or whatever if you have to, yeah. right? You're not going to be able to work for a little bit unless you're a psychopath. So that's, that's the trend that's been started. When something happens, yeah. here's some money. You know what I mean? 
And in this case, where two young kids were killed under the supervision of a company that's supposed to be looking after the welfare of kids. Mm -hmm. The state. It's going to be. Yeah, yeah. No, and like I said, I totally get it. It just, it, it shocks me the amount of money. There are men who spent years, years of their life. I think 18 years was the highest one I can think of of their life on death row for charge for crimes they did not commit and they were given about 600 grand for their pain of, yeah, of the see, pain and, and then suffering here we go with the whole yep. scale of things right yes. it's like how how does that happen then how does one get 98 million the two children and uh, they don't care if they put uh poor people in jail that's they'll pay that fine it's only 600 yeah. million oops my bad it was better than the alternative uh if you look here i'm going to show you why 98 million dollars isn't that bad uh really it's okay. it's not that if you look at Washington's budget for this year, mm -hmm. how much you think is in their budget? How much you think they get? Oh, if it's ninety-eight million, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go no, with their, whole like, yeah, their whole fucking budget, the whole ten, state. No, how much you think <laughs> the budget is for the state? No, like, really, ten billion. Fifty-nine billion. Okay, uh, that's close. <laughs> ninety-eight million dollars is really actually nothing, but it does take a chunk out of they out of their legal fund. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, you got to, you got to hammer their nuts. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not, like I said, it's more so the amount. And then after Celeste bringing up the fact of like somebody on death row for a certain amount of years only gets like 600 grand. I'm just wondering like, who's the person that's in charge of making all of those decisions? A jury. Yes. Um, <laughs> here's, here's the thing. Uh, it's actually 57 million from the state of Washington. They were also awarded. I have no idea how this works yeah. because uh, I don't get it. They actually eight point two four five million dollars per child that the father is liable for, and I have no idea where that money would possibly come from. I assume it's just they liquidate the full estate, they get everything. Everything else is kind of just I owe you, but I am dead. Yeah. So it was only fifty seven million still. from the actual state. Yeah. But yes, that is that's fucking nothing. It's, yeah, it's still and they the the charging the the perpetrator is a lot of the time uh when they're dead like that it doesn't really make sense but like let's say you get a guy that's in jail uh, and I, I learned this talking to verena ritchie actually and i say she told me that when the reason they sued kaylin schlatter is because each day they get a page right and when he comes out he'll have a fucking nest egg no he doesn't they're taking every last little penny that he has by mm -hmm. suing him. And he only gets like 50 cents a day or something for being in jail. So they'll do that just to get whatever jail money they get and whatever parents try to give them. So they never have any, it's to, it's to fucking 25 years is long enough. You think, well, now you got, you can't even have a nest egg to start. You're done. Wow. And I, it's the same thing for this too. Wow. This also actually helps set a precedent. Because in a case where the father wasn't also dead, you now have a precedent of eight point two four five million dollars for grieving yeah. victims. Yeah, I just looked up the the numbers there. So they if they paid fifty seven percent or fifty seven million out of their their budget of was it fifty nine billion or whatever, it's point zero zero one six percent. Yeah, of their budget. Yeah. It's it's not it's it's budget spread everywhere right uh, probably most yeah. of that's done with like infrastructure and uh shit like that but like their legal budget i i would i could get into it i could look it up and we could figure out a real percentage but yes out of their real budget it's nothing but out of their what they have to pay because every year there's all sorts of lawsuits it's not like this is the first lawsuit they get all year yeah but you gotta yeah. you start hammering away at their legal fund and it starts to become more and more not worth them they what's cheaper uh ref reform or just pay it out reform or just pay it out and eventually it's reform right yeah. well that's of course what the lawyer says too yeah. in these cases it's we pushed for this much money because we want to we want to force reform we want to force a change in culture really the fact is he gets a percentage and it's a fat fucking percentage but we all got jobs man <laughs> yeah we're all just we're doing what we can and we're doing our best out here but you know, it does, it does force reform. They do have to consider this in future when they're thinking social services, when they're thinking court proceedings, it affects a whole wide variety of, of factors here to ensure that this doesn't happen again. And it will happen again. For this sure. is just shit that happens. People will always be. The system's broken on purpose. And the more shit that happens, the more we fix it, but the more we break it and we're just fixing it and breaking it all the time. It's, 
it's not perfect, but we're not ripping people apart, quartering them in the street and everyone watching and cheering on. Like it's, it's gotten better for sure. Legal stuff, but it's not perfect for sure. Can you imagine if we did still do that? Though? I know it's scary. That'd be sick. Like, just like, well, I wasn't going to go there. So <laughs> guys thanks so much for listening head on over to our facebook and instagram to join in on the conversations about all things unethical just search unethical podcast you can also find us on patreon where you can get access to all of our super awesome content uncut videos of our discussions and early release of all the episodes we are adding fun stuff all the time so you should definitely come and check it out thanks again we appreciate all of you Shimmy, shimmy, y'all, shimmy, yeah, shimmy, yeah. Baby, I got your money. Hey.